Hey everyone, Terry here with IP Expert. What I wanted to do right now is I wanted to just kind of step away from all of the really heavy duty subjects that I've been working at setting up this video on demand series. And what I wanted to be able to do is take another look at Cisco Discovery Protocol. Something that's become really, really interesting to me is, is the fact that, like I've said in the past, the majority of the deployments where I see CDP being used, it's used minimally. For instance, it's disabled on the majority of outfacing interfaces just from the point of view of security. But in the preparation of working and building this video on demand series, I thought it was important to stress the fact that I've learned some things about CDP and one of these extends to a concept referred to as secure CDP, secure Cisco Discovery Protocol. Now what I wanted to do is I wanted to take the opportunity to do this and walk through this particular application because again it's something that I just recently realized myself that I never knew existed in the context of CDP and I thought it would be really cool to share it. Now you guys may have worked with it in the past but the main idea here is, is that the big problem that I have with CDP is, is the fact that it exchanges a lot of information that I want exchanged but it also exchanges a lot of information that I ordinarily would not want exchanged. For instance, one of my pet peeves is the fact that it has a tendency to exchange the IP addresses for the purposes of identifying management devices. Let's take a look at what's going to happen between two of our components in our topology. I want to start with R10 and R11. So what happens here is, is R10 is connected to R11 via a serial interface. That's going to be serial 2 slash 0 on both sides. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to go in here and make some configurational changes. I just simply want to bring these two interfaces on each of these components up and make them operational for the purposes of exchanging layer two information. If I do everything and everything works the way I want it to, I should see immediately that I can identify my neighbor. Well, not immediately. We know it's going to take a little bit of time. So let's see what goes into this. So from the console, what I want to do is I want to go into these individual components, R11 first, configure terminal. I'm going to say interface serial 00 or serial 20 and I'm going to say no shut. Let's cut over to uh, R10, do the same thing. EN config T interface 2 serial 20 no shut. Do show CDP neighbors. Let's see what we get. Right now we see we only have cat1, but we didn't wait for S20 to come up and become operational. So let's do this again. All right, now we see R11. Now, looking at it from this point of view would not ordinarily or necessarily lead me to believe that we're doing too much. I mean, it's identifying the nature of the platform. Again, this is that virtualization platform that we're using. And it's giving me my interfaces and things along those lines. The stuff that I want to know about, specifically, this is the identity of my neighbor, what interfaces I'm connecting to, because that's what's really most useful for me to discover the nature of my infrastructure. However, what I want to do is I'm going to execute another command here. I'm going to say do show CDP serial, actually let's uh, exit out and do it this way so we can use context sensitive help. Show CDP neighbors serial 2 slash 0 detail. And now here's my pet peeve with CDP. Notice right now it's giving me my advertisement version which is fine but it, no, it gives me IP addresses. This is not necessarily something that I want to be exchanged via CDP. Now up until this point what I've always done is just disabled CDP on outward facing interfaces. But let's pretend that these two interfaces, SW, I'm sorry, serial 2 slash 0 and serial 2 slash 0 on R10 and 11 are inbound interfaces. I ordinarily would not necessarily want to exchange information associated with IPs. And what we see is we have two areas here. Notice we have the IP addresses that are on the devices and also we have this management interface. They just happen to be one and the same. But what I want to do is I want to explore the possibility of being able to filter information that's being exchanged by CDP. Now in order to be able to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to use a tool, a tool that we probably haven't talked about and one that I just recently learned about to be perfectly honest. I mean, I'm not ashamed to admit the fact that I'm learning new things and delving into RS version 5 where we don't have to focus on all of these stupid router tricks and corner case scenarios allow us to focus more on the protocols, applications, 
functions and features that are going to be critical and pivotal to being able to pass the exam. One of these is CDP, believe it or not. So let's take a look at what happens here. The tool that I want to highlight is it's going to be exposed to us when I do CDP and I press the context sensitive help, notice right here I see a TLV list. Now what this does is it gives me the capability of creating a TLV list. So what I'll do is I'll type CDP TLV space list and then I'm going to give it a name. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to call it secure underscore CDP. Now notice it puts me in a sub configuration context that says TLV list. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a context sensitive help and then I'm going to bring myself back into the equation. What I want you to see here is, is the list of all of the TLVs that we have the capability of filtering. Now when we look at this, what this says is, is that the moment that I incorporate one of these command lines into this TLV filter list or this TLV list, what it's going to do is it's going to say I will no longer send this particular TLV. Therefore, what we're doing is, is we have granular control as to what TLVs we can send in our updates. Now remember, these TLVs are bi-directional, but right now I just want to focus on sending a message from, actually I'm on R10 to R11. Let's take a look at what's going on here. Alright, so I'm going to throw my pen behind my ear and I'm going to say I do not want to send the address information nor do I want to send information about my management address. Those are those two IP addresses that we saw. So I'm going to say address and I'm going to say management address. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit. Now the moment that I exit, what I see here is, is that I have the capacity of being able to go in here and look at this thing. So I could type show CDP TLV list and I can either see all of them or I can look at it by name. So let's just see all of them, see if I've got anything in here. Right now what we see is we see a TLV list called secure underscore CDP that's blocking address and management and management address. But notice that these are TLVs, but we also have not applied it to an interface. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix that, little oversight very quickly here, and what we're going to see is, is I can go into an interface, serial 2 slash 0, and what I can do is I can execute the command CDP, context sensitive help, and notice it's going to allow me to apply a TLV list. So I'm going to say filter TLV list, and I want to use the name. We said secure underscore CDP. And then I hit enter. Now let's go ahead and back out of this and first of all notice that our console is giving us a message. It's saying that we have a CDP message 6 TLV list has been applied to this interface and the name of the, the TLV list that has been applied. So again what I'm going to do is I'm going to just up arrow here and look at my show CDP TLV list and notice it's going to tell me what interfaces it's been applied on. Let's do this. Let's add it to another interface. Config T interface 2 slash 1. Just up arrow till I can get to it and I'll hit enter. See, no shut. Okay, exit. Exit. Just up arrow until we can see that command. And now notice it's telling me that it's applied on more than one interface. Now, where's the payoff here? Well, the payoff is, is like I said, we're now telling R10 do not send TLVs about the IP address or the management or the address and the management address to your neighbor. Let's cut over to R11 and see if that particular outcome has been achieved. So let me scroll up to where I can find the original output that we had. Uh, I'm not going to see it. Let's give her a try here. End. Show CDP neighbors. Well, I don't see any real changes here. Notice I have my peering relationship on 2.0. So now let's try the output of the, the detail commands. Show CDP neighbor serial 2 slash 0 detail. Notice now we don't have an IP address. Notice now it's no longer advertising the information about the management IP address. So all I'm trying to illustrate here is, is that we have a tendency to take tools for granted. 
In the context of the new routing and switching version 5 exam, we want to avoid that when and where possible. So guys, always take the opportunity to delve deeper into the protocols because we have the capability of doing lots of manipulations with regard to sending information via whatever tools it is that we have. Remember, I mentioned in the other class, I said that LLDP has a tendency to be a little bit more granular because I can go in and I can say, well, I just want to send and receive different messages. Or I can say, just receive and not send, or send and not receive. And that can give me the capability of being able to exchange or control what information is exchanged by the protocol. In the confines of CDP, it's a lot more granular than even I really thought. Now I'm going to be delving into this even, even deeper as time progresses, but right now this is just something I wanted to be able to throw out and let you guys know that we're, uh, we're working on getting as much information packed into these video resources as humanly possible. So, with that being said, I need to dive back into my routing protocols, and I'll see you guys in another video very soon. Have a fantastic evening. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.